Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich. Here we have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Electric Royalties Limited, Brendan Urich. How are you doing today, Brendan? I'm doing well, thanks, Rich. I appreciate you having us on. Hey, always a pleasure. Very excited having you on the show today. And one of my first questions I want to ask you today, very excited to learn about your company. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Electric Royalties Limited. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm one of the founders of Electric Royalties. Uh, I'm also the CEO. Um, you know, my, my first year, 10 years in the, in the mining market were really spent in a bear market. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time on the gold, uh, into copper, uh, base metals more later, but, um, you know, it was a very, very tough market. Mining's a, uh, unique space, you know, the average development timeline for a project is 15 years. A lot of stuff can go wrong, you know, over that time. Um, and most of these companies out there are single asset companies, which means you're really all in on one project. Uh, and so as somebody who is, you know, helping advise these companies and, uh, you know, working on investing in these companies, um, you know, it's tough to look around the market and see something where you, you can really kind of guarantee, you can't guarantee success, but where you can increase your odds, you know? And so electric royalties is really about doing something different. You know, what, what can we do to really, you know, maximize our odds at, at success in this space? And it was kind of two fronts for that. Um, you know, one, the royalty business model, <laughs> you know, let's start there. It's definitely the best business model we've had in mining. Um, you know, lots of advantages. I'm sure we'll touch on that later on. Uh, and then second was, you know, uh, the clean energy metal space, right? Um, you know, right now we're the only royalty group out there folks exclusively um, on all the metals you're going to need for this transition to clean energy. Uh, but for me, that's, that's the real opportunity. You know, we see two decades of opportunity here. You're looking at exponential growth forecasts across all nine of the metals. Uh, that we are targeting. And, um, you know, it's the first time in human history, something like this has really happened, where you have so many uh, new waves of demand that are going to hit so many different metals all at once. So, um, so between the royalty business model, you know, and, and this space, um, you know, we just felt like we had a really good opportunity to, to put something together. And uh, my whole background really is, you know, financial advisory uh, for junior mining companies. So a uh, fairly easy transition to, uh, to dealing with these companies and just saying, hey, look, you know, now I have the money, so <laughs> we can do something. Super excited. And Brandon, can you explain your business model and how royalty companies are different from traditional mining companies? Yeah, for sure. So lots of different advantages for a royalty company. Um, you know, first of all, diversification, right? Uh, we've already got 20 assets. Um, that's, that's key, right? Wow. <laughs> We're diversified across all of our target uh, clean energy metals. Uh, including lithium, you know, copper, nickel. Uh, and uh, so that's one of the big ones. The other is we're not responsible for development costs, uh, the capital costs to actually build out of mine, you know, any cost overruns, any more capital that the company needs to put that in production, uh, we are not responsible for, right? Uh, it costs us nothing to hold these royalties. So our cost essentially is an upfront cost uh, where I, we give them some capital, you know, a couple of years ahead of production. And then once in production, they give us a percentage of cash flow uh, really for the life of mine. So um, yeah, it's a fantastic business model. I mean, last uh, this last year, we've had over 400 million uh, raised by operators to go and invest in our assets, uh, which is going to you know boost the value of those. Obviously, help with in production, but um, uh, but at no dilution to us. You know, the other thing is our GNA is really low. You know, if you want to build a very small mine uh, in in the mining space, you might have to hire 50 to 75 people full time, and you know you contrast that with uh, you know the biggest group in our space. Uh, Franco Nevada, uh, they're about $25 billion company, you know, they only have about 25 employees. So, you know, the GNA is much lower, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, diversification. Um, and it's really a, a long term play, where we're protected against inflation, because our capital costs, development costs are nothing. Um, you know, we don't get hit by that inflation capex. Uh, but our operating costs are also lowest in the industry, they're, they're zero, right? Um, you know, on a unit, a unit basis, we, we pay nothing. So once those uh, start to come online, um, you know, it's, it's really a, just a long-term recurring revenue stream for, you know, in some cases, our assets have 47-year uh, mine lives predicted. So, wow. uh, so yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting space. Uh, the other thing I would say about royalties, um, because we're dealing in good jurisdictions, we're actually able to tie those royalties to the project. 
Um, and so that's another further hedge against, uh, you know, management taking on debt at the wrong time, uh, losing the asset or whatever. Uh, whoever takes it forward after that is still going to have to honor and pay our royalties. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of advantages of the royalty uh, business model. And we love the royalty business model here. Now, Electric Royalties invests in a diverse portfolio of metals required for the decarbonization of economies. Out of all of these metals, which ones are you the most bullish about? I know you touched base on lithium earlier. Yeah, well, right now our portfolio is about 40% lithium. We've got one of the uh, top lithium portfolios out there uh, in terms of royalties. Um, and lithium prices are up 300%, you know, this last uh, 12 months. So, wow. uh, you know, the crazy thing for us is uh, our revenues expected are directly proportional to metal prices. So if lithium prices go up 300%, we're expecting 300% more revenue uh, on a direct basis. So, um, so that's good. Look, look, lithium's had a good run. I think all of the metals are pretty exciting uh, that we're targeting. I think copper um, long-term is always going to be, uh, you know, definitely a bellwether of this transition. And, uh, you know, unlike the other clean energy metals, We've already scoured the planet for everything copper we can find. You know, we've mined out a lot of the best deposits. Um, and so I think, you know, long term copper definitely has the brightest future. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now we've been heavy lithium. Lithium is doing very well. Uh, but all these commodities that we target, um, you know, are all going to be in short supply um, and, and, and very big increasing demand as we move forward. Can you tell us what are some of the milestones Electric Royalties Limited has for the last quarter of 2022, which shareholders can look forward to? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's already been an exciting year. I mean, a lot of that, uh, this is, operators do all this work, you know, so a lot of it, you know, we, we expect it, but, you know, when it actually comes out, comes as sometimes a surprise. Uh, but we've already had about uh, 25 plus updates this year alone across about 13 assets. Um, and so, you know, we'll definitely have some more as we move forward. We had the uh, PFS uh, just completed on our OTA lithium royalty. They're looking at integrating that uh, into an existing operation. Um, in 2023. So that was, a, you know, a big milestone uh, in, you know, coming forward here over the next quarter. Uh, we'll see, you know, we've had uh, just had a resource update on our Seymour Lake lithium asset. They just doubled the resource. Um, you know, so stay tuned. You, you'll definitely see a couple of things, uh, you know, come together here as we move forward um, in this last quarter. Can't wait to see you guys hit your goals and see what it's going to look like in the next three to six months. The company recently announced Electric Royalties announces filing a preliminary economic assessment for Mont Sorcier Magnetite Iron and Vanadium project. Can you go through this for us and what it means? Yeah, so that's uh, the second, you know, uh, of that exact type, uh, type of news release that we've had in the last like month and a half here. Um, we had another one come out uh, about a month and a half ago on our Battery Hill asset. And it's, you know, basically a, a very big technical report. It's put online for everybody to. Uh, you know, go go out, review, you know, look at the assumptions that are being made. Uh, but it, it basically attaches economics to these projects. Um, and so the one that we had about a month and a half ago, it's on our Battery Hill royalty. It's the only manganese district in all of North America being developed in the EV space, if you can believe it. But uh, there's just not that many of these manganese deposits in North America. But they outlined, uh, you know, 47 year mine life. Uh, and, you know, we have a 2% gross royalty on that. And so essentially, once in production, uh, we're looking at on, a, on the base case, the lower end case, uh, about US three and a half million a year cash flow to us once production and, you know, wow. showcasing a 47 year mile life. I mean, that one, uh, you know, for me, this, that royalty alone makes us undervalued, you know, where we are today. Uh, the one that we just put out there was on Monsocie. Uh, it's a fantastic iron ore development project, probably at the top in North America. They have Glencore as a partner. Uh, they just put economics out on that. And, um, you know, on that one, we're expecting it to be about US 750,000. Uh, to, our, to 1.5 million a year US uh, in cash flow back to us. And they, they were showcasing a 21 year mine life. Um, and that was only on the indicated resources there. So, you know, they had a PEA come out uh, previously, uh, a much higher life of mine, you know, including some of those other uh, resources. But, um, but yeah, that's just updates that are coming from our operators. You know, we've got 20 more, we've got 18 more assets on top of that. And so, um, you know, this good news comes uh, as projects are moved forward. When you add it all up, it's going to look really, really nice. Can you also tell us about Electric Royalties closing Zonia Copper Royalty acquisition? Yeah, so uh, you know that was a new royalty we created. Uh, we're one of the few uh, junior royalty companies out there that actually uh, is capable and has experience, you know, going creating new royalties. Um, it's really great because they cover the whole project, right? Uh, you can do things like we did here. We add an option in uh, to increase that royalty over time. Uh, but in our view, this is, you know, one of the top three copper development projects 
uh, that we think will make it in production uh, in North America over the next, you know, kind of five years. And uh, it's a it's a copper oxide development project. You know, most of those have already been mined out because um, it's it right at surface. You know, easily found. You know, fairly easy to mine. Um, and so, yeah, they've already got about 500 million pounds of copper in the ground there. Uh, our money, our capital that we're giving them for this royalty um, should get them to to feasibility study within about 18 months, uh, two years. And um, it's kind of a perfect example of where we like to play. You know, uh, the big private equity groups, they'll pay about 10 times what we pay, you know, uh, 12, 18 months down the road to get the same royalty. Uh, but nobody's really competing in that kind of space where we come in. Um, so, yeah, real sweet spot, you know, type deal. Uh, and, um, you know, great copper exposure. It's in Arizona, you know, great mining jurisdiction. So, um, you know, excited to close that one out. Now, if Electric Royalties Limited were to compare itself to its competitors in the sector, what would you say sets you guys apart? Yeah, well, we don't, I mean, we don't have a, a huge amount of competitors. You know, we did the first graphite royalty financing ever done. We did the second tin royalty financing ever done. Uh, we've got the largest public lithium royalty portfolio out there. Um, you know, so we're kind of the only one competing on a lot of these metals. Um, you know, there's a couple of groups out there. You know, one group just does nickel and copper. Um, you know, that's 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 great. Uh, but I think they're really missing the boat on, say, zinc and you know, nickel and or uh, sorry, uh, you know, zinc, manganese, uh, you know, graphite, tin, all these, um, and lithium as well. Obviously, lithium has been the best uh, performing metal. We're heavy lithium, so you know, our real goal is to to not bet on any one commodity. Um, you know, we're not trying to predict where battery chemistries go. Uh, new, what new uh, technologies might come out, disrupt supply. You know, we're trying to stay diversified across all of these energy metals, really give you that exposure to the base building blocks um, of the transition to clean energy and, and tie yourself more into that um, than any one, you know, single commodity. But 90% of the royalty companies are precious metals focused, right? So, um, you know, there, there it is. So one of the things that's very important to us, Brendan, is learning the structure, your share structure. Uh, we love companies that have nice, tight, tight share structures and understand that it's important to protect the share structure for the investors. We talked about this earlier, you know, reverse splits and stuff. Our community doesn't like that. So can you go through the capital structure of Electric Royalties Limited for our viewers and how you plan on attracting more institutional investment alongside more retail investors? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, look, we won't be doing any reverse stock splitting, anything like that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all in as a, as a CEO. Uh, you know, my, myself and my family are, are large shareholders. We're about, you know, 12% of the company. Um, and it's fairly tight today. You know, we have uh, different partners uh, like Fox Royalties, who I know you guys have had on. Yes. Uh, Globex, uh, who, who are, are big shareholders. Um, and then the majority of it is, is really high net worth individuals. Um, you know, guys that have been very successful in the industry, um, you know, guys like Ian Telfer and Paul Matisic. And then, uh, you know, from beyond that, we've got a few uh, institutional shareholders. That that really is going to be, a, uh, uh, you know, a goal of ours. I mean, the problem is when you're sub $50 million company, you can't really get a lot of these big institutions because they need to write, you know, a $5 million check. And if that's going to put them over 9.9%, uh, that's, that's an issue, uh, you know. So uh, it's really a, a grind at this stage to, to eke out those. But you know, between uh, our shareholder base, it's very, very tight. You know, we don't have, um, you know, much retail. We're probably, you know, 10, 15% retail. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, definitely, um, you know, <laughs> management has a big stake. Uh, and, you know, we've got, got a lot of good investors, uh, shareholders on the table. No debt, uh, nothing like that outstanding. Love that. No debt. That's music to my ears. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about Electric Royalties Limited today, what would that be? Well, how to, how to calculate uh, a gross revenue royalty uh, payment, you know, if you want to go through and check out our assets, we have 20 of them. Um, you know, we get limited sometimes in terms of what we can put out there, but um, a gross revenue royalty income that we expect is really our royalty rate, right? Percentage royalty rate times expected production and then times the metal price. That's it. And that's annually what we expect uh, to get from each of these royalties that we own. And if you do that, uh, you know, and you look at the mine life, how many years we'll get that. Um, you can do your own due diligence on us and, you know, I'm sure you'll be a, a, be a screaming buy for you. What is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions about Electric Royalties Limited? Uh, yeah, well, you got my uh, uh, email, phone number on all of our press releases there at the back of our presentation, which is on our website. Um, you know, so reach out and, uh, you know, we're happy to, to get in touch and um, answer any questions you guys may have.
Thank you so much for your time today. The CEO of Electric Royalties Limited, Brandon Urick. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, this is a new pick for our community. We've never talked about it on Rich TV. Put the symbols on your watch list and on your radar right now. E-L-E-C in Canada, E-L-E-C-F in America. And thank you for joining us today, Brandon. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thanks for having me on, Rich. I look forward to being back on again in the future. Always a pleasure. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners. We bring you the news. We bring you the CEO interviews. We bring you the analysis. And we bring it to you first. Thank you for watching us today. Your host, Rich from Rich TV Live with the CEO of Electric Royalties Limited, Brandon Yurick, saying, have a nice day, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you.